Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein with your financial market wrap up, and this is the weekend edition. And it is Sunday. I wanted the markets to open for the Monday trade, which they've done because I'm not going to be putting out these wrap ups at the end of the day for several days, possibly a week, as I'm due to have oral surgery. I've mentioned this before. It's something that I had planned out starting at the beginning of the year. Finally, the surgical team got together and uh, this is when we're going to go ahead and do it. And I'll be sutured up for a bit. Hopefully everything goes right. And I'll be back in a few days. Could be later this week. We'll see just what they, uh, they come up with uh, on this. All right. So let's talk about where we're at because behind me is a sea of red. There is one market at this point that is higher, the dollar index. Everything else is lower. We'll see what happens with the grain markets when they open. Uh, in the Ukraine, they claim this week a ship or ships are going to leave port. I thought they were going to send some ships out without grain on them first. And if you saw, Russia has bombed another series of ports with grain and killed one of the biggest grain executives in uh, Ukraine when they hit his home. Now, I'm sure it wasn't targeted by them. They wouldn't know where he lives. They couldn't send a cruise missile there. They'd, they'd never do that. When we look at the bonds in the note market, you can see that they're even down. So there's two school of thoughts that have merged through the weekend. We have the school of thought that is saying the market has bottomed. You are not going to make lower lows this year's. And from this point on, we will crawl and crawl our way back to higher levels. You have the other school of thought that says this is a bear market rally. They can be severe when you get them, but nothing has changed. We haven't seen the inflation begin to trend down so far in the economic data. And even when it begins, it's got to show a trajectory to convince the Fed that they can take their foot off the pedal in terms of raising interest rates. This leaves us where I predicted we were going to be. I said after the last Fed rate hike, we have that void that comes in from the end of this month until September when it's all going to be data dependent and the market's going to be all over the board. Did I actually think we were going to rally this much in the stock indices and the silver market and the copper? No, I didn't. Okay, I thought we'd get a good rally, but this was certainly bigger than I thought it would be. There's nothing wrong. You were down hard. A lot of people changed their opinion and that's what the markets do. When we look at the E-mini S&P at this point, now I've got this arrow over here. I just didn't move it. It's my fault and put up with it. The market is still under the 18-week average of closes. I define bias this way. When the market is over the 18-week average, I have an upside bias, and it's a filter on swing lines and some of the other technical indicators. And when it's under it, I have a bearish one. It's a monthly indicator. I know a lot of you look at the monthly. If you're trying to trade off monthly, it's very, very difficult. It's a wonderful academic exercise, but let's assume you wanted to get bearish. Where are you going to put stops? Sometimes they're so far away, monetary stops don't make any sense. So I look at it a little different than that, and I leave it at that point. Now, on the weekly, it's different. The weekly, I've been looking for resistance to show up, as it has in the past, over the 18-week average of closes or rallying right up to it. It is not uncommon to get back to it and be a little bit over it. A lot over it would get me concerned that maybe I'm the one wrong and this isn't the bear market rally, it's something else. The first challenge of a week or two of it? Nah, I'm not in that camp just yet. When I look at the overall bar chart, I can see how the market has got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, bullish. The market is trading in between. Now, the 100-week average, and if you take a look here, it is the, uh, the 100s in the green and the 18-week is in the red. That's a serious resistance point. That's where I think the market's going to fight a battle right now. So this should be a very interesting week to do that. If you were a, a bull on this rally, that's also a profit-taking area for you. When you look at Bollinger Bands, we stepped away from them, came up there. And when you look at momentum, it's up. So going home for the week, you have a pattern that the swing line has got higher lows, higher highs. That's bullish. The market's over the 18-week average. That is bullish. And momentum is up. As a chartist, everything's pointing up. Where would your stop have to be? 
under the most recent low of 37.2375. So it's a, a risk that would carry with it from here in the neighborhood of 400 points. If you're so inclined, that's your type of risk. For me, I'm gonna look at the market and let it prove itself. I'm lucky that I don't have to look at the market a few days this week, but I'll leave it sit there. Obviously, if you're bullish here and you're thinking it's going up there, you have your argument already set that the Fed is going to be backing off, that earnings like we saw and are seeing coming out of the corporations are still going to be good. You've accepted the fact that that's built into the market, unlike me, that is saying a June and July rate hike is not built in. It is being in coming into the market now. So our corporate earnings didn't get that point and a quarter increase during that period. Now, the next quarter, it gets more interesting to me, which starts now. So now I want to see the, uh, the time frame that we've got in this new quarter and what it's all going to have. But that, that's my attitude on it. When we look at the Dow, it's the same thing. This is the resistance zone of the 18 week and the 100 week. You have a pattern, higher lows, higher highs. If you're a buyer, let's assume you're a buyer at the 18 week average. Your objective is the 100, 32, 901. You've been there and your risk is all the way back to that low. Again, the risk reward seems odd to me. If you're buying the 18 week, your resistance is right above you in the 100. You got to risk all the way down there. I'm not crazy about the chart pattern. In the NASDAQ, the trend is up. So as a chartist, you have to throw what you think away and you have to say, what is the trend? So far in these indices, higher lows, higher highs, momentum up, bias up, trend up until the market gets back underneath. 11,389 potential target, 13,711. The Russell is right with them. All four of the stock indices for the moment are in an uptrend. On breaks, all have support in the neighborhood of their 18-week moving average of closes. None are in overbought scenarios. In the VIC, I'm sorry, in the 30-year bonds, when I do the dailies, I go right to the VICs. Um, as you can see here, overbought, that's the first momentum. I doubt the market's going to be have the power here to get much over the uh, the 145 uh, 10 area. That's 145 one. I take that back. So first resistance right there. The market sitting here. Trend up. Bias up. Momentum still up in the market. Ten year note. Same thing. Resistance going to be right up here, coming into that upper Bollinger Band area again. I think you're going to get caught in the sideways action. Now, if you're of the opinion that the Fed is going to be coming to an end of interest rate hikes, well, I guess that would get you thinking that this market can keep right on going, right? Because the higher you go is what you want to do if you think interest rates are going to fall. So if you clear that, you're going to be telling me you're going to 129. I'm clearly not in your school of thought, but as a chartist, that is what the chart looks like. First resistance here, and if it clears it all there. In the dollar index, you have momentum that has now lost its embedded reading, which often leads to price and the 18-week average of closes trying to make a run at each other. You hit your upside targets back here. You can't say that in the uptrend, you didn't get to your targets and you're getting a correction. But am I bearish? Well, first off, even as a chartist, there's nothing bearish on this. You could fall back to support, but the trend is not turned down. In the euro, you're still very much in a downtrend. You have lower highs, lower lows. If the market can get up here and clear 103.20, then you can make the argument higher lows, higher highs. Maybe you're going to make a run at 105. Are you there right now? No, you're still very much in the bear camp. In the Canadian dollar, now you've got to start watching the, uh, the banks that are coming up. You have the Bank of England coming up now for its rate decision this week. I think the Bank of India, Brazil's got it. Canada's going to get its jobs numbers like we are. In the U.S., we're already talking for Friday, 250,000 new jobs and the unemployment rate being guessed at 3.6%. From my perspective... That gives the Fed all the ammunition it needs to just keep putting the pedal 
to the floor and saying, hey, we're going to fight this inflation. We've got great job market. We have people still getting plenty of jobs. We're seeing jobless claims still fall nicely. We've got unemployment for all purposes at levels we haven't seen. And inflation has been stubbornly high. How do you stop that? You stop it by dampening demand. You dampen demand by making money tight. That's what I think they're going to continue to do. But there's also the playoff. What about other banks as they do that? Does it mean the dollar stalls here? Hey, they're going to do too much in the U.S., but they're just getting going in Canada. The Brits, uh, Australia this week has its cut, uh, hike rather. They're talking 50 basis points. Do they go up against the dollar as this goes? That's the seesaw game you're in right now. Once this gets out of the way, then we go back to trading the chart action because when they're out of the way, we know the Fed doesn't do anything until September. And it seems to be a game of, what the Fed does, I'm going to do. That seems to be what's going on, with the exception, of course, of the Bank of Japan, which the market has done their job for them. I'll show you that. Lower low, higher high, resistance fighting from the 18 to the 100-day average, but no trend in the market. In the end, as I said, this market has come nicely from the 7208 level all the way up here into the 75. So the Bank of Japan didn't have to do anything. The market did its job for it. It made the yen stronger. You've lost your embedded reading. You're probably headed in towards the 76 level. And then we'll see what happens. There's been no policy change in words yet from the Bank of Japan. This is a technical play that ended this decline that began, honestly, all the way back up on this chart. The most recent swing was from here down to this because now you've taken out and broken that recent pattern. But there, you've had this along the way. Bitcoin, battleground's the same spot it's been. If you're a weekly trader, I've mentioned to you the battleground is the 200-day average of closes. You're on it. Momentum-wise in the slow stochastic, you're trying to lose the embedded reading. Haven't quite done it yet. In Brent versus WTI crude, well, you just went in a wild swing in this market from high to low, my gosh. But do remember, part of this has to do with how this weekly chart's done. You left the September and went into the October contract, and that's part of the differential. So let's take a look at the weekly contract. That's still bearish. Now, Libya, today announced through its oil minister that they're all of a sudden producing 1.2 million barrels a day. I've seen nothing in the press until today about that. And this comes from their oil minister. So very quietly, their production has been coming back up. It was what, running half of that. And suddenly this is a much bigger number, which helps ease some of this oil control uh, at strength. And that's why you are sitting here right now with the market, in my opinion, down this much. I've given you the reason why that's happening. You're down in the uh, WTI, not very much in sympathy. You know, their Brent's not going to affect us that way. Rebob Gasoline getting a hit today, coming down about three cents right now. And the question is, does it take out this low or, or does it start forming a base low to go up into the Labor Day holiday? The trend is down and all the market did. It had a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, rally up to the resistance. Last week, I said the pros will probably sell right here, stops over that high, looking to see if the market can drop again. It's exactly what's been occurring on that chart. So you put it together. It's an interesting technical time. You can see the sea of, as I said, the red behind me that is taking place right now. By the time the grains open, they may join. That'll be very interesting. And it's a good time for me to take a few day, much needed days that I'm going to need off as the stitches have to grab hold and then I'm able to talk again. But while I'm gone, learn about enhanced Bollinger Bands. It's probably one of the best tools I've ever seen the area of letting you know way ahead of time where the projected tops and bottoms are in the market, the rationale behind it, how to trade up to it, and it's an inexpensive course to learn. Take a look at this. Good luck, good trading to you, and I'll be back as soon as I can speak. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced 
Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.